What is up guys, Elliot Waite here. And while editing my last video, I kept trying to zoom in to the timeline by holding down command and scroll, but that's actually just goes up and down. And I pulled up this little accessibility keyboard so you can see which keys I'm pressing, but the actual command to zoom in and out is to hold down alt. And I think the reason I got in the habit of pressing command is that that's how you zoom in and out when using Figma. So I tried to see if this behavior was something that was customizable, but from doing some Google searches and looking around the settings, it didn't look like it was. So I tried out my other tools that I often use, which are Carabiner and Keyboard Maestro. But from what I found online, it didn't seem like either of those offered the ability to change the way scroll actions worked. So in my search, someone suggested checking out Hammerspoon. And Hammerspoon is this cool tool that is kind of an interface between you and your operating system and you write code in Lua. And I've never written code in Lua before, but this website, Learn X and Y Minutes, has a bunch of quick tutorials that will teach you how to learn a programming language really fast. And I checked out their Lua tutorial and it's pretty simple, especially if you know how to write Python code. So I tried it out and basically you create this little init Lua file inside a Hammerspoon directory in your home directory. And in that script, you can set up little callback functions that will run when certain keyboard triggers or other triggers are fired. So here's a little example just to give you an idea. So you get access to this global HS variable, which is for Hammerspoon. You set up a hotkey binding. Command A will show this alert, hello world. And if we reload our configuration, and I'll bring up this little keyboard again. Now when we hit Command A, instead of selecting text, it shows hello world. So now if we change the code a little bit to set up an event watcher, so whenever a scroll wheel event occurs, we'll show the alert, hello world, and we'll start that watcher. Now if we reload our configuration, whenever we scroll, get a hello world, getting close. So then we change it a little more. We check if the flags contain the command key, then change those flags so that they are only the alt key. Now if we reload our configuration, now when we hold down command, zooming in and out works. However, if we go back in Figma, and now we do command scroll, now it goes up and down because it's switching it to use the alt command as well. So what we actually wanna do is make it so this code only runs when we're using the DaVinci Resolve application. So here's the full code. It basically is the same thing we had before, except for now we're checking to see if the DaVinci Resolve window is focused, and whenever it is, we'll enable this modification Whenever it's not focused, we'll disable it. So now, if we run this in DaVinci Resolve, zooming with the command key works, and in Figma, it's back to its normal behavior. So then, later that day, I saw this talk about the new Mac OS operating system, Big Sur, and I thought I would try it out. So I upgraded to Big Sur, and you know that other app I was telling you about, Carabiner, which I use for my other global custom keyboard shortcuts, well, it stopped working in the latest version. So I thought, well, maybe I should downgrade back to the previous operating system. But then I realized that these Hammerspoon shortcuts that I set up for DaVinci Resolve were still working. And I thought maybe I could just set up the same keyboard shortcuts I use in Carabiner in Hammerspoon. So I tried it out and they all worked. And I was even able to transfer all the shortcuts that I use in Keyboard Maestro over to this Hammerspoon script. So I just wanted to show you what those shortcuts are so that you have an idea of what Hammerspoon is capable of. So these are the commands I brought in from Carabiner, and they basically make it so that whenever I hit the left command key, and you can't see it down here, it's gonna show both command keys, but I'm only hitting the left command key right now, that the right side of my keyboard, the J, K, L, and I keys become arrow keys. So I can just move around real quickly, and then right to the left and right of those keys become the home key, end key, and then my U and O keys go forward and back a whole word. So this makes it really easy to navigate around without having to move my right hand. And if I ever want to use keyboard shortcuts that are mapped to those keys, I'll just use the right command. So for example, usually the U key, if I'm pressing the left command key, will go left the word. But if I press the right command key, and you can't see it on the screen, but I'm pressing the right one now, it will do the keyboard shortcut, which in this case makes the word uppercase. So you can set up hotkeys that are different depending on whether you're pressing left command or right command. And this ability wasn't built into Hammerspoon, but because it's a full programming language, 
I just set up some code that watches the modifier keys when they're pressed and when they're not pressed. And I use that in combination with the built-in hotkey function to be able to distinguish between the left and right command presses. And here's an example of something that I'd usually do in Keyboard Maestro, which is I hold down command, press the caps lock key, and it opens a new Chrome tab. And how that works is that in my keyboard settings, I have modifier keys, I've remapped my caps lock key to the escape key. And then in here, I just say whenever I hit command escape, run this Apple script. And this Apple script just checks to see if Chrome is running. And if it's not running, it'll just open Chrome using this activate command. And if it is running, it'll check if there are zero windows open, in which case it'll create a new window. Otherwise, it will reopen the window if it's minimized, activate it, and create a new tab on the front window. So here we go. Boom. Quick new Chrome tab, way better use of the caps lock key in my opinion. And this is just one of the many things you can do with Hammerspoon. So if you like writing code and you like customizing the way you interface with your computer, then I highly recommend checking out Hammerspoon and seeing what you can use it for to make your own setup more customized for you. All right, I'll post a link to my configuration file if you wanna check it out for some more tips on how to write some sweet hammer spoon code. And that's all for this video. I'll see you guys next time.